Hey everybody, Andy Fielding here, Remax Twin City and Fielding.com. And today I'm chatting with Dan Simpson, who is an RBC more RBC mobile mortgage specialist. And I wanted to talk to Dan today because you may have heard the past couple of days the government has implemented a new stress test for mortgage approvals. And I thought no better person to talk to than Dan. So welcome, Dan. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Andy. Uh, and I'd uh, love to uh, discuss the uh, some of the new rule changes that did take effect uh, June the 1st. Uh, as you know, the, the market's been hot and the government's been uh, fairly anxious to try and, you know, more or less kind of cool things down a little bit. But, uh, you know, at the same time, too, you know, you know, we've had the stress test in place now since uh, January 2018. And, you know, the notion around the stress tests initially was just to make sure that, you know, that in the event that interest rates uh, do go up, that, uh, you know, homeowners will still be able to continue to afford uh, to make their payments through not not just short term as interest rates are lower, but through the entirety of the the more the time that they actually have the mortgage. So it was implemented back in 2018. We've had it around since then. Uh, they've now implemented some uh, changes that did take effect uh, June 1st, not only for uh, anyone uh, putting less than 20% down, but as well for uninsured mortgages uh, for those that are putting sizable down payments of 20% or more. Uh, basically, uh, it just it tightens things up. I wouldn't say it's not I wouldn't say it's an absolute game changer, but uh, it does make it a little bit more challenging. So so in essence, really what happened, what's happening uh, is the stress test, which basically is uh, the higher of uh, four point seven, nine percent or or the actual rate plus two percent. Uh, so people would have to qualify at the higher interest rate uh, as opposed to the rate that they may actually be receiving from their lender. Uh, to ensure that they would meet uh, the criteria in the event that interest rates do actually go higher. So that's what uh, we call the stress test. And uh, so that that uh, changed effective June 1st. So the stress test went from a minimum of 4.79% to uh, five and a quarter percent, which, uh, you know, that uh, ultimately is going to have an impact on on an average buyer anywhere from four and a half percent to five percent of uh, what they would now qualify for. So how does that how does that affect the numbers that people like that? That's pretty much what it does, right? Like mm -hmm. before all this stuff came in in 2018, somebody may have been approved for 700. Let's that's just right. say a number. Now mm -hmm. that the stress test, does that affect the number that they're allowed to effectively borrow? Yeah, so I, just before hopping on uh, on our call here, Andy, I, I did some uh, just some quick calculations and uh, sample uh, just to give you an example. Uh, so let's take a client that uh, is maybe making a hundred thousand dollars, or maybe they've got a combined household income of a hundred thousand, and uh, using you know your typical five year uh, fixed rate uh, with a thirty year amortization. So they're putting twenty percent down. We've got the thirty year amortization under the old rules. Uh, that buyer would have uh, qualified for approximately six hundred and fifty, six hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars under the new rules. Uh, so, with uh, qualifying now at the five and a quarter percent, that same buyer would now uh, qualify for a purchase price of six hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. So, not not a not a uh, not a real significant change, but uh, again. You know, that's with 20%. Now, someone putting less than 20%, it's going to be more impactful, especially our first time home buyers that are trying to get into the market that generally don't have the 20% down payment. So it's going to have a bigger impact on those buyers for sure. Okay. And the one thing, the one thing I do recommend is that, uh, you know, anyone that been pre-qualified uh, prior to June 1st, you know, loop back with your lender, uh, if it's not me, whomever it might be, uh, just to see, you know, what the impact possibly could be, because if they're on the edge and they're looking at homes, maybe that are a little bit of out of range for them now, they need to know that as well. So, okay. So if somebody got pre-approved before June 1st, mm -hmm. um, let's say with, let's, hypothetically with you, is that still, um, is that still active for a certain period of time or is it as of June 1st, it has to be reassessed and, and relooked at? Yeah, it'll be grandfathered until the until the application expires uh, and then uh, for a longer closing. So uh, anyone that might have purchased uh, a new build, uh, for example, uh, uh, with a local builder, 
uh, you know, under the old rules, if they had uh, received a firm approval, then we would honor uh, under the old rules as opposed to the new rules. But anyone uh, qualifying or applying effective uh, effective today or, or after June 1st, uh, they, the new rules would, de- would generally apply. So, okay. Have you seen, I know it's we're, we're, we're June 3rd, I think it is. Um, have you seen any any issues pop up? And I know it's only been a couple of days, but uh, you know you must have been pretty busy leading up to June first. Um, are, are you seeing? Is it is the is the stress test helping? Yeah. So I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, I think what's important here is that uh, it's just it's really education. Andy is. Um, you know, educating the buyers. We did see a, a bit of uh, a bit of a, a flood of applications come in prior to June first. Uh, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think what's important is you know we educate our buyers. You know, we have options. You know, there's co-sign op- opportunities. You know, we can always bring a parent on um, or a family member to help qualify a co-signer. Or uh, you know, we can look at larger down payment options for buyers as well. Um, and in some cases, you know, we may have to educate uh, and and, and uh, you know that more or less kind of downplay you know the amount that maybe they are eligible for or under the new rules. Again, it's not a significant increase. It's four and a half to five percent. But uh, you know, I think the stress test is here to stay. So you know, we'll, we have to adapt. And uh, but again, education is key, and and it's important that everyone does know, you know, the impact in terms of their qualification moving forward now. Okay. So the the biggest takeaway I'm getting is we need to education is huge. Um, sitting down with uh, a. a a qualified mortgage professional like yourself, getting all the information. Um, because I find sometimes people don't, well, people don't understand the process. We do because we're in it all the time. But sitting down before we start looking for a house with you, um, finding out all the information that you need to find out, educating them on on the numbers and the process and stuff like that from your side, uh, definitely will make the transition to my side of the transaction a lot smoother and a lot less stressful because I find, you know, I know when my wife and I bought our house, we didn't really understand any of this stuff. And I find a lot of that is the case as well. So if there's, if there's a couple tips you could give, um, let's say first time buyers, because seasoned, seasoned buyers uh, seem to have a good grasp of this already. Um, Mm -hmm. But some of my clients have kids that are coming up into, or have friends that, you know, that are looking to buy homes for the first time. So if I could ask you for a tip for a first time buyer and a tip for the seasoned buyer, what would those be? Or are they the same tip? You know what? I, I mean, they're going to be very similar, but uh, I think, you know, for those that are looking to enter into the marketplace, I think, you know, the earlier you sit down with a mortgage specialist uh, or broker is key because, uh, you know, regulations do change and uh, the housing markets is, is moving extremely fast, right? So, uh, it's important that, you know, they line everything proper so that they know, you know, how much of a down payment are they going to need? You know, what's the impact on their income? Does, does it, is it going to meet the stress test? Does it, is it realistically going to meet their expectations on the house price that they're looking at? So the sooner or naturally that you sit down with, with someone uh, and do that, the better, you know, for the seasoned uh, buyer, you know, the same rules apply across the board. So it doesn't matter if you're a repeat or a first time home buyer. Uh, you know, obviously income's key, you know, in terms of being able to meet the stress test requirements, but, um, you know, the same, same, same recommendation, you know, sit down, understand, you know, the implications of, you know, what uh, taking on additional debt, you know, purchasing a new car, what's that going to impact in terms of the stress test, you know, and, uh, and just having a real good understanding and expectation. So that way, you know, when you go out and you start putting offers on home that you can, you can shop with confidence and you can know that the house that you're buying is not only a house that uh, you know you're going to get approved for but it's also going to be a house that uh, you can afford not only now but when rates actually do go up perfect yeah that's those are some of the conversations that i've had with my clients is you know you know we need to we need to get these these ducks in a row before so that yeah if something does happen you know if kids get involved or, or like children i mean um you know or job changes or stuff like that uh, one of the things that I've really appreciated about working with you and sending my clients to you is is that knowledge and that understanding that, you know, hey, once we're once we're approved and once the house is approved, we're locked in. So that's 
that's something that I find really, really exciting. And it makes my job easier um, and helps me to give those smiles to people and, you know, eventually give them the keys. So, uh, Dan, I guess that's really it. Um, folks, if you have any questions about the new rules or, or you want to get pre-qualified, uh, Dan's contact information will be at the bottom of the newsletter or be somewhere in the newsletter. Uh, it's also here on the screen as well. Feel free. Can they call you directly? Can they, what's the best way to get hold of you, Dan? Yeah. Call me, text me, uh, email me. Uh, again, I respond fast to text as well too. So yep. yeah, any way you choose. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining me today. Uh, again, folks, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I hope you're well. I hope you're safe and I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks so much.